the client can't give us the time of the hiring manager, then that's probably not something that we need to work on because it's obviously not, you know, if they're too busy to hire this person who is apparently really needed, then that tells me something about the real validity of what they're looking to do. Welcome back to Talent Hunters, powered by MRI Network, where each week we talk with the world's top talent strategists and executive recruiters. If you want to build talented teams that drive your company to big goals and big growth, then this podcast is for you. And now let's join the conversation with today's episode of Talent Hunters. This is Vince Holt with Talent Hunters. Today, I'm with Christian Burney, co-managing partner of the McGee Resource Group, located in Shreveport, Louisiana. 19 years with our family, the MRI family. 11 years, give or take, as co-owner of the McGee Resource Group. Last year, ranked number 11 in the world. Congratulations and welcome, Christian. Appreciate it. Good to be here, Vince. Oh, it's great to have you. I, I love what your office has done. I mean, it's how you've maintained the success there is amazing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and really, how did you get to where you are today with the McGee Resource Group? Okay. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah. So you know, start off before I guess I got here, you know, my degree is in sports medicine and education. Um, and, you know, I was going to change the world one student at a time. Um, but after a, a full semester of teaching high school, I thought somebody else can do this because that's not for me. Um, and just happened to talk to yeah. Charles McGee and one of the VPs at the time. And I thought, you know, I think I could do that. I can relate to people. I can have, uh, you know, conversations. Um, and so I wish it was of some great story. Um, but, uh, really just thought this, this could be a good fit for my background and experience. Um, it was tough at first, you know, I don't have the, I don't have this typical, uh, skills that you think of with a great recruiter. I'm not an outgoing person generally. Um, but so it, it took a little while for me to get going, but once I found my way to do things and, and how I can, how I can understand people, uh, really took off. Um, and not long after that, um, I was actually promoted within McGee to the uh, director of training operations. So I trained all the new people and everybody that came through. And at that time, Vince, you know this, this was in the early 2000s, everything was blowing and going. So we were hiring 20 people a year, 25 people a year. It was crazy. Uh, and then, you know, about 10 years later, the McGee said, hey, it's time for us to retire. Um, and, uh, you know, I talked with my business partner, Stan, and we thought, you know what, that's worth a shot. We want to we want to carry on the legacy that they started. Um, and so here we are gosh, 12 years later. Um, and, um, you know, we're doing our best to keep that name alive and uh, and really putting our clients or our candidates and, and our uh, people we work with first. So that's kind of our main priority and always has been um, since before we started here. Now, in your office, co-managing, is there, are there different responsibilities that you and Stan have, or do you both really run it together in the same vein of each other? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, the big stuff we kind of handle together, you know, the, the office-wide uh, parameters and ideas we kind of handle together. But what we've done recently is we have two major teams in, uh, at McGee. We have a healthcare team and we have an IT team. <laughs> Uh, and Stan is responsible for day-to-day -day management of the healthcare team. And I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the IT team. Um, those seem to put our, fit our personalities well. And so uh, we kind of separate those two out, uh, but then we come together for the overall, um, if you will, management uh, of, the, of the firm. So forgive my sports comparison here, but... Of course, LSU women's basketball is involved big time right now. Mm -hmm. Do you compete with Stan the, within the office there in a, in a manner that helps inspire each other? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yes. I mean, honestly, um, <laughs> I, I catch myself on occasion when I'm talking to the IT team saying us and them and we, you know, um, 
So yeah, it, and not in a sense of, uh, hey, the team that does better for the month gets a lunch or something. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a sense of, hey guys, they've been carrying us for a couple months. It's time to pick it up. So yeah, there's a little bit of um, uh, positive reinforcement, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, it's from inspirational. Each sure. As opposed to Absolutely. throwing down in the parking lot. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I like that. Gosh, year over year, you guys are, as a team, very successful. Everybody has bumps in the road and stuff, but you guys constantly in the in the eye of the storms. What do you do in your environment, you and Stan? What do you guys do that maintains that that true standard of success? Yeah, so I think it boils down to the people, and our tenure is really crazy. Um, over half of our employees have been here for over ten years. Um, which in recruiting is just not, that's not, not the norm. Uh, we've got a couple guys who have been here for over 20 years. Um, and so it's a, when you have that kind of tenure, right. And camaraderie and people know who you are, you know, after a decade, they know your flaws and what you're good at and all that kind of stuff. So it's allowed us to really build the team around individuals instead of forcing individuals into a part of the team. Um, and so I think that that builds continuity um, and, and hopefully, ideally, it keeps those valleys from being as low as they could have been if you're, you know, constantly bringing people in and out and trying to figure out where everybody fits. God, that kind of tenure is just, it's remarkable to hear you say, what do you feel that you and Stan do that, it, that really keeps that, those people there? What, what is the value there for them? Yeah, I want I want the people that work for me to feel like I'm never going to ask them to do something I'm not going to do. Um, I don't ever want them to think that I'm different or more than or whatever. There's no chasm between owner and AE. You know, there's as, as little as possible. So I'm going to do the exact same things that I ask them to do. Um, and I, I think most of the time people appreciate that. and And they see... That I hold my health myself to a higher standard than than I hold them, um, and so I think as as someone you know who obviously was employed at McGee for a while, that's all you could ask for is is ownership to realize that one you're a human being, mm-hmm. right, um, and two that um, we're all in this together. And I know that sounds cheeseball and right all this stuff, but um, I, I genuinely feel like there is a um, uh, of camaraderie that's not normal. You know, we start every Monday morning or Monday. We have a meeting every morning at 15. And every meeting is started with something personal, right? It's never about the jobs or we have. It's always somebody sharing something personal. And that started with COVID, actually. We, we were like, let's share something positive because everything was, nothing was positive, right? Uh, and that's just carried on that every morning is just understood that we're not talking about business first. It's about, hey, how'd your kid do at the soccer game or you know, hey, we've got someone we'd like for you to keep in your thoughts or prayers or whatever the case is. So that that seems to be what people appreciate, you know, um, and then creating an environment that, honestly, I want people to come to me and say, I appreciate you doing what you're doing for us, right? I'm providing as much value as I can um, so that it makes the job easier and constantly trying to make the job as easy as possible. As you know, you've been doing this for a long time. It can be a hard job. Um, and a thankless job. Uh, and so let's do everything we can to try to at least make those, um, let's share in, in the downfalls. And so you have someone else to look to and say, okay, I'm not in this alone. You know, I'm not in the valley by myself. Why? That, it's rare to have somebody talk about their business, and I know this sounds corny, like it's true family. And that's the way you do talk. That's 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 inspiring. It really is. Thank you for that, Christian. Yeah, appreciate it. When you're dealing with client companies, what do you do? First of all, we're going to look at your part of the relationship. What do you do to earn their trust in being able to trust you and going out and solving their problems? Mm-hmm. 
Well, we, it's funny you ask that question because we literally talked about this this morning in our uh, Tuesday morning training. Uh, unfortunately, in recruiting, to stand out, all you really have to do is do what you say you're going to do. I mean, it's really, that sounds ridiculous and simple, but it really is as much about being honest and transparent. You know, and if that means losing a deal, that means losing a deal. You know, if that, whatever that means, but just doing what you say you're going to do and being honest with, like you said, the client company is like, here, here's what we, based on our experience, you're, you're an expert in whatever it is. You're, you know, you're manufacturing widgets. Um, I would never tell you how to do that, but we do this every day and have been doing this for 30 years now. We have some ideas on what you should do. And here are the things that, you know, we feel like you should do in order to, to be successful. And sometimes I don't want to hear that and that's okay. Um, but it's better to hear that now than two months down the road when we're unsuccessful, uh, then they're unsuccessful and then they're two, two months behind where they could have been if we had the conversation initially. So you allow the client companies, you put them on a pedestal that they know their business. They know what they're doing. What you bring the party to the party is, I know how to get you your talent. Here's, here's what I need to be able to go and ferret, it, ferret that out. Is that true? Sure, 100%. And, you know, they'll tell you really quickly okay. if they don't believe you. Um, and you're going to find that out eventually. You know, we've all had clients where we thought they were great clients, and then down the road, it's like, mm, man, I sure wish I hadn't wasted a lot of time on this. Uh, and that's a little bit self-serving. But at the end of the day, you know, we're doing them a disservice if we're wasting our time on something that's really not syllable or not realistic. Um, and then everybody's, everybody loses in that situation. So if, if a client company comes to you and says, hey, we want to find XYZ person for this job and we're going to pay them, and I'm just using a percentage, a 20% less than the going rate, you're up mm-hmm. front with them as to whether it's deliverable or not. Correct. Correct. In fact, we had a, just a, a conversation and unfortunately, this is the client we've done a lot of business with on Monday, and they want to pay, a, it's, it's funny, 20%, it's at least 20% below the market. Um, and we told them, look, at the best, we're going to get a C candidate for this, just being real, you know, open and honest. And funny enough, they responded with, okay, well, we're okay with the C candidate because we're not willing to budge on that other stuff, um, which admittedly, we haven't spent a lot of time on that because we've told them that that's not what we think you should do. Um, but yeah, it, I think we owe it to them to be as honest as we can about um, what it is that they're looking for. But at, at, in order to do that, you've got to be really confident in what you're talking about. You know, you can't go without market data that speaks to that. It can't be just my opinion. There needs to be some sort of facts that back up that, that thought. And we've provided that out quite often is mm-hmm. here's the here's the last five positions we filled. Here's the ones in your area. Here are what here are the candidates we've talked to recently. And this is just the what the market's telling you. This isn't Christian telling you this. This is the market telling you this. What do you do? And I and I get the trust where that's going the one way, but let's reverse it now. What does a client company have to do to earn your trust? I think it's all about being open to listen. You know, I, I, I get it. If you're saying, hey, Christian, we can't do that. Our budget is what it is. Our internal equity is what it is. That's okay. You know, those are, those, are, those are things that happen. But I think just being open to listening to us and hearing what we have to say, and if we can try to work together, come up with a solution, um, then great. But if we can't, we can't. But I think it's it, all we can ask for is, you know, listen to what we're saying and realize that this is what we do. And, you know, I hate to say we are the experts in the field because that sounds a little, a little corny, but that's what we do every day. And we, you know, we've have people who've been here for 10 years and this is what they've done. And so just being open to listening to us and hearing what we have to say, doesn't mean they have to change anything, but <laughs> be open and listen to me, be open-minded. And if you can do that, then I'll, I'll do what I can to help you with whatever needs you have. So we've talked a lot about building trust both ways. When you're taking a search assignment, and and look, I'm not trying to get granular here, but the reality is how long does it take you or one of your AEs 
to truly take a thorough search assignment to want to invest your time into going out and solving that problem? It's a good question. Um, I think it varies, you know, depending on the AE and depending on the on the the client. Uh, but what we do is usually on, and what's interesting, this has been a new phenomenon is I just noticed this the other day that all but one of the search assignments we've taken over the past year have been via Zoom and not through a phone call. Uh, it's always through Zoom or some sort of face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and for us, we usually like to have two of those. One initial, hey, tell me about your firm, right? Initial video call, just like we're having right now. Uh, and then the second with multiple people on the team uh, that specialize in different areas so that we can make sure we're not mishearing anything or making sure that we're having correct dialogue with the right people. Um, and I think for us, what we've made the determination of recently, admittedly, we should have done this a long time ago, is if the client can't give us the time of the hiring manager, then that's probably not something that we need to work on because it's obviously not, you know, if they're too busy to hire this person who is apparently really needed, then that tells me something about the real validity of what they're looking to do. Boy, is that paramount. Oh my gosh. And ironically, as you described, yeah, you're using Zoom, but your two calls, I'll call them calls, that's basic training from years and years and years ago. Have a phone call, take a five-point job order or a little bit more, schedule another call because as you do your homework and you start digging into more questions to be asked, now you can get thoroughly a greater feel for what you need to solve. Great job. That's right. It's funny how more things change the more they say the same, right? Uh, exactly. Exactly. Training love, really hasn't changed that much. I love the Zoom idea, though, because you're personally, when you're taking the search assignment, and, and I've never done that, but as you started talking, I'm big on pictures in my mind. I'm picturing taking a search assignment face-to-face, -face, and I can see a big plus on that. I, I really can see the relationship growing. That's awesome. It's really been crazy. Like, you wouldn't have thought it made that big a difference, but the dialogue you can have just about life, right? What's what's in their background, right? What is just the stuff you can see? It's really it's really fascinating. We wouldn't. Well, I, I don't know that we'll ever want to do another one without it. Honestly, <laughs> I'm going to try it. One of my AEs does it, not regularly, but has done it, and it's proved to be effective. She's truly landed everyone she's ever done. She's fulfilled the position. Um, let's, let's focus a little bit on the candidate side. This is a little tougher thing to, to talk about trust because what I've seen is most candidates don't do their own resumes. Most candidates have them sent out. Most resumes don't really tell the story like job orders, printed out job orders. They don't really tell the true story. What does your team do to really dig into the reality of the candidate? Hmm. So that's another, that's a really good question. And that's something that we've also changed in the past couple of years. Um, you know, I think it's funny. I feel like COVID accelerated all kinds of things, but I think it ac accelerated kind of the AI developed resumes that, it, you know, I can do a perfect resume on anything in 10 minutes, right? Um, and so really digging past that to find out who that person is. So we also implemented on the candidate side, a double conversation. Um, the initial AE has, does the first CDS, you know, covers all the, the details. And then the second AE has a very similar conversation. It'll be shorter, but it will either confirm or that that's who they say they are, or will uncover maybe holes that either the first A you missed or that doesn't that don't line up uh, with what the person really has done or hasn't done. And so ha implementing that two separate, and we let them know that up front, hey, you're going to solve my colleague mm -hmm. and he's probably going to ask you some of the similar questions. We just want to make sure we're not missing anything and present your candidacy in the best light. Um, and so that's really helped because if they're not who they generally say they are, they're going to hang themselves pretty quick usually. Um, and that second interaction is really a, a has been a, a lifesaver for us on who we do present and who we go to bat for. Now, do you use in that same vein? Do you use technology 
to fact check at all on your candidates? No, not anything more than Google, right? Um, and here's what the technology, you're going to laugh at this because this is old training too, uh, but good old fashioned references, right? If we are who we say we are, and we know a lot of people in the SAP space on the IT side, then any resume we get, we should know people, right? At that company or that used to work for them. And that's, that's an easy thing to, Hey, so-and-so has applied. Oh, that person's great. Or I don't know who that is. Right. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, from a technology standpoint, we don't, implement anything new or fancy, I'd be open to, to looking at anything there is. But uh, no, honestly, not a whole lot other than, again, on the recruitment side, we have quite often done Zoom CDSs. Um, that's also, in fact, one of our clients suggested that, that does a lot of remote work. And they said, hey, we want to make sure that we talk, you talk to all of our candidates you're presenting us in, you know, face to face. And it's been another cool thing that, man, it's amazing what you're going to cover when it's a real like human being on the other phone and not just a, a phone, you know. I want to ask you a question because this came up probably 10 years ago with me. Can it, with Zooming with a candidate, can the appearance of that candidate offset the power that they may have in accomplishing what they may have accomplished in their career? Yeah. You know, that's a good question. I think in the IT space, anyway, I'll speak just from IT for a second. Almost all of our clients now are doing Zoom or some sort of video interview. There are a lot of, half of them aren't even doing on sites. And so it is, I would say a hundred percent of them now are doing some sort of video. So it also gives us an opportunity to see, can you present yourself? <laughs> Like how much prep do we need to do on the interview for how you interact with people? We want we want your, you know, your your background to shine through, right? And and some people just have trouble with that, and so being able to coach them and walk them through how to do that, um, and I'd because I'd rather have them try it with me mm -hmm. than to experiment with the client. And yeah. so, um, you know, that's that's been beneficial on that front as well. Boy, that's huge! I it didn't even enter my mind that way, but because. My experience happened before Zoom and, and all yeah. this and, and what it was, was I had set up a telephone interview. Telephone interview was phenomenal and it was for an engineering position and they met face to face and the first words out of the hiring authority after the interview and the debrief was, have you seen this person? And mm. I says, no, but of course all my spidey senses started going right. off. Right. So, well, he's missing his front tooth and talks kind of strange with it, which couldn't pick up on the phone, but he was an engineer. So it didn't hurt him there. Mm -hmm. But as you were talking, of course, why wouldn't you use zoom or some sort of face to face to help prepare them for their interviews and see what they're going into that. That's an education for me. Thank you for that. Thank you. Sure. Sure. What do you do to inspire on a daily basis, I understood the conversations in the morning, okay? Your role is to educate, to help. I get you running a desk, but the reality is, what do you find yourself doing to help your people during the day? Mm. So if our people ever watch this, they would be really interested in this question <laughs> and my answer. <laughs> Um, because I can be, admittedly, I, I know this about me. I can, I'm a more of a pessimist, a realist, if I were, you know, whatever. So I generally can look at the negative, right? The glass is half empty. Um, and so I have to watch that just being fully transparent. I, I, I know that about myself and I've got to watch it. But I think for the most part that people need to remember their why <laughs> Um, behind the grind of phone calls and stuff that happens in recruiting on a daily basis. And so being able to try to remember to help them articulate, this is why you're doing this. This is your ultimate motivation. In fact, we had last year, we had um, 
little cards printed out. Again, this is ridiculous. Um, and put them on their desk of here's your why, right? Whether that's pay off debt or whether that's provide for my family, whatever the case is that literally they had to tape on their desk. Um, and I had some too, by the way, um, that really remind us to push past the pain, right? There's, this is like a, my, my kids run track and this is like a, a distance run. You know, the pain comes before the end of the run. Um, and a lot of times the, the pain comes before the, the, the response or the feedback. And so being able to push past that or remembering your why um, is um, very important. I think also what's interesting is we're structured in a very much in a team <laughs> approach. We're not siloed, right? Like you and I grew up in, you were siloed. We're very much a team. We're interdependent upon each other. And part of that in those calls in the morning is we're reliant, right? I, I have a job and I'm not working it. I'm relying upon Vince to fill this job. Um, and that's some accountability. It doesn't have to be said, right? It's just understood that, look, I'm, I'm, we're interdependent here. Um, and it's, it's funny how you don't have to say a lot, right? When your response on the call is, yeah, I've had no luck in three days. I don't have to say anything, right? There's a, there's an intrinsic motivator there that um, all you have to do is is uncover and it's and it's there. So how big is your team now, Bull Office? So we have 16 uh, total. Um, now we have three that are um, administrative <laughs> um, and the rest are on a desk. Um, so it's a not a huge team, but it's decent size. Do you, are you still looking to hire? Always. Always, always. I think good, good recruiters. I will never say no. Always. Now that's a mouthful. <laughs> good yeah. recruiters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's the magic, and you know exactly where this is going. What I do. do you specifically mm -hmm. look for when Joe Blow walks in the door? That's a really good question. So let me go back to what I told you before that. When I interviewed, they did not hire me initially. Um, I took the Drake personality profile test and, you know, they have the match of here's what a good AE looks like. And literally mine was the opposite. It could not have been more wrong <laughs> for this job. Um, but, you know, they told me no, but ultimately I got the job because I taught myself how to play golf, uh, which sounds ridiculous. There's a whole long story that goes with that, but they were impressed by what I, what I did and what what I took on to um, teach myself to play golf. So I say that to say, I'm not necessarily looking for anything in particular. Um, I want to hear what you have done that other people weren't willing to do. Because ultimately, when I look at the people who have been successful here, we know you've been this, doing this a long time. There is no magic bullet. Um, there's no magic potion. It's as much about hard work and getting after it as is anything else. And most people don't want to hear that and don't want to do that. So what is it that you've done that shows me that you're willing to do what most people aren't? And then secondly, I think the conscientiousness of other people is really important. How do you interact with others? How do you how do you interact in an environment to where you show that you are listening? Because I think ultimately as recruiters, we are as much therapists as anything, right? We're on both sides answering questions and listening. And most of the time, it's not even up to us to come up with a solution. We just uncover it and just say, there it is, right? Um, and so can you actively listen and really do that? And I'm surprised at how many people cannot. How many people are really poor, active listeners? So how do you, I mean, that's great insight to what you're looking for. But in an interview, mm. most people that are interviewing are trying to put their best foot forward. So what are the key indicators that trigger what you want to see? Yeah. So I don't have a definitive yes answer because if I did, I'd be selling it, right? And we wouldn't be talking. <laughs> I'd be retired. <laughs> uh, but we do, we do involve the whole team. We involve the whole team. We have 
them sit with multiple different people throughout the day, 45 minutes, just ask questions. Don't no guidance, just here you go. Uh, and then we have everybody on the team meet with them in the office without me and Stan, just the team and them. And it's about an hour of just interaction between the team. And I, I, I'm because we've got tenure, I'm confident that the people that work for me and work for us know, right? They can spot if someone that's not, and, and we use that a lot as a, a barometer for who we, who we do and don't move forward with. Um, and it's funny, this is going to sound very um, simple, but I'm looking for someone who, can you articulate to me what you've done? Just walk me through your resume, walk me through your career. And can you articulate to me when I get done, when you get done, can I go, okay, I got it. Because if you can't do that, how can you articulate a, a job to a candidate or a candidate to a client? Um, I need you to be able to articulate to me so that I can understand and, and you can get across to me what it is you haven't, haven't done. What you've done or haven't done isn't as important as do I understand what that is. Understanding their DNA to succeed at whatever they're doing. What is your, yeah, what, what, what can I, I would rather hire a racehorse and have to pull back on the reins than hire one and I have to constantly hit it with the whip. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, just, just trust. I want to trust that you'll go without me having to tell you to go. Uh, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but no, it's really, it's, you know, the, the thing that I love about this conversation is you keep referring to simplicity and in this complicated world of technology. And I, I joked with this with somebody else last week was technology. When you started in this business was moving along. And today it's gone from a rabbit moving along to a jet fighter pilot taking hey. off. What do you do, Christian, to keep you and your office focused on what we've got to get done today and not trying to use technology to solve everything? Mm. So you just <laughs> described me. I, I'm not a technology guy. Um, I just... Uh, anyway, I don't have Facebook. I don't have any of that stuff. Like, um, I don't, I don't have any interest in all that stuff. LinkedIn, yes, because it's a must, right? Um, but I think ultimately it's about embracing what you can use, but never losing the fact of recruiting is built on relationships. Period. End of discussion. That that's it. Who do you have relationships with, and how strong are those relationships? And you cannot do that through text and email and whatever else you think you can use it for. The only thing to me that technology has done is change the way in which we get people on the phone. And that's it. It's, you know, when you and I started, it was, hey, here's a list of a hundred. Good luck. Right. And that, but that's all we have. Right. Um, do I feel, still think that's a viable thing today? Sure, I do. Do I think we should be using other things? Absolutely, we should. But ultimately, I still have to get on the phone with you, and I still have to enter a dialogue that I can provide value, no matter what that looks like. And that ultimately, if that takes you 40 calls to get there, and I know we're not necessarily talking about phone calls, but let's be real. That's what old guys like us, that's what we do is write phone calls. Um, you, you've got to have the conversations or you'll never get there. You will never get to the point where you're not chasing stuff. Because in this job will get hard if you're always chasing, if you're never developing relationships. And ultimately, that's what, and I have this conversation with my team. They're, they're tired of hearing about this exact conversation um, because it's so easy to get caught up in, well, this is new, and this is new, and this is new, and this is new. It is new. You're still going to talk to people. Candidates are so hard to get on the telephone today with caller ID and constantly, like you, specializing mm. in your dick. They look, they see your number, they know who you are, they're going to ignore. What do you do to trigger people to, what kind of comments or what trigger items can you use 
to get these people to call you back. Yeah. So um, I think it's as much about, as I mentioned earlier, the relationships as this is about anything else. Um, and if there's any sort of information we have about that person, right, I'm going to use that to my advantage. If I know that their son is a senior on the football team this year, I'm going to say, how's the football season going? Hope he's doing great. Also got something love to tell you about. I'm not leading with a job. I'm leading with the thing that only I know, that not 47 other recruiters are calling about the same thing. So you as well, we, it doesn't have to be me. It can be anybody in our team, any sort of, that's the reason you have a database. I don't want to have to remember everything. You shouldn't have to remember everything. We can sound like geniuses because people yeah. think we do, but it's not. It's right there, right? It's, it's, at your, it's an open book test. That's what it is. Um, and so using any sort of um, uh, inside information I have um, to get that you know, person to, to call me back. But also, it's the times in between when I'm on LinkedIn or when I'm sending emails or whatever that I'm creating value. That's not every time I call us, hey, Vince, are you open anything new? Right. Mm -hmm. You hear from me once about that. And in the next four mm -hmm. times you see me, it's about something totally different. You know, it's about articulating this new device or, hey, your company implemented this strategy or whatever the case is. It's not give me stuff. It's not self-serving. It's about you. And so when the one or two times a year I call about you, it's a different thing. And I'm more likely to call back than if I'm calling every every month with the job of the month. And it just gets old and I'm white noise then. So true. Where do you envision the McGee Resource Group in three to five years? You know, I think we've, we've really implemented a lot of stuff in the last two years um, that's really provided us an opportunity to scale. You know, I think before then we we were thought we were in a place where we could really grow, but just, we weren't, we weren't there. You know, I feel like over the last couple of years, we've really taken to take a step back and say, Hey, what are the things that we need to implement now that are going to allow us, you know, that opportunity when that does arise. <laughs> and so I do feel confident, you know, this is all dependent upon the economy, right? That's a whole other conversation, but assuming all that's equal, um, I feel like we're in a good spot that we will be able to build on some of the successes we have uh, currently. And I think we've seen that this year already. We're up quite a bit over last year. Um, and, and I don't think that's due to luck or, um, you know, it's just better, right? I think part of it is due to we've actually taken some steps that, are, that, are, that were necessary for us as a group to really put forth their best foot and use that 10, 20 years of expertise that we have and we're not chasing the same stuff. So careful. You're seeing, you're, you're seeing the class half full there, young man. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> they're they're going to get on to me for this. I'm going to have to go do something after this, kick a dog or something. Um, but I really, I would, I would be surprised if we're not at a growth stage in the next couple of years. I really would. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we've covered the a vast territory about the business clients, candidates, your team, you, at some point, you've got to clear the head. What do you do to unwind? So the simple answer is my kids are 14 and 17. Um, and they both are sports, they run track. And I actually coach my son's cross country team and indoor track team. So I'm pretty entrenched. <laughs> with them, uh, because it, this is gonna, this is gonna sound glass half empty, but they're gonna be gone soon, right? Yep. They're, they're close to being adults. Uh, and I don't want everyone to lose that. Um, uh, and so everything, when I get home, takes a second, a backseat to their stuff, which right or wrong or different. Uh, that's something I'm passionate about. Uh, now if I find time, I love to go fish. I love, I live on a lake and I fish as much as I can. Uh, which is really clearing the head, right? <laughs> that's that's ultimately my my time, but it's it's generally around my kids. And what do we? How do we make sure that our my relationship with them is where it needs to be at this stage in their life? Oh boy, 
Christian spoken like a true champion. Seriously. Well, I, don't I know really, that, really so. want to thank you so much for taking the time out. Glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I appreciate but it. Taking, taking the time out and, and spending it here and allowing me to pry into your business, into your personal life and so forth. And, and I hope that you get out of this as much as the people that view what you've had to say here. And I thank you again very, very much. This has really Absolutely. been a pleasure. Thank you. Really enjoyed uh, being here. Good to, good to talk with you. 